Church family, this is Pastor Jim. I just wanted to give you a follow-up to the message this past week. We're going through Revelation chapter 2 and 3, and we're looking at the seven churches in Asia, Asia Minor, where the Apostle John was writing uh, the book of Revelation, writing the letters to them from Jesus that he had received from Jesus, and to the church in Pergamum and to the church in Thyatira. Both of those churches were dealing with false teaching. And they had compromised their morals so much so that they were falling into sin. And the Apostle Paul tells them, or I'm sorry, uh, the Apostle John tells them that they are to repent. Jesus tells them to, that they are to repent uh, because they are committing sexual immorality and they are eating food sacrificed to idols. And so somehow in the midst of the pagan worship and uh, culture that was around their their city, uh, they had compromised their morals. And it reminded me of this book by Jerry White, a NAV Press book called Honesty, Morality, and Conscience. And the whole idea of compromising one's morals uh, or compromising on the morality uh, that comes from the scriptures um, is that we are often self-deceived. Uh, in the book of James, in the New Living Translation, it says this, James chapter 1, verse 22, it says, and remember, it is a message to obey, not just to listen to. If you don't obey, you are only fooling yourself. So knowing God's word and not putting it into action is fooling ourselves. And in the book of Revelation, the churches were compromising their morality. Um, and they were being deceived, but first they were deceiving themselves. And so here's, in this book by Jerry White, he gives six or seven uh, indicators that we are deceiving ourselves and compromising on the way to compromising our morals. He says this, he says, we cannot live for long with a conflict between our actions and our knowledge of what is right. So when we do wrong, we often use self-deception to convince ourselves that our actions were right. To do this, we embark on a process of rationalization frequently in the form of self-deceiving thoughts. So see if you can identify with any of these. Uh, they are indicators that we may be compromising our morals. We think thoughts like this. It probably wasn't the best thing to do, but I really had no choice. I really had no options, but this probably wasn't the best thing to do. I know the Bible seems to say this is wrong, but I'm sure there are several interpretations of those passages. You know, whenever I share the scripture directly with someone and I can tell right away that they don't want to listen to it, usually their first response is, well, aren't there many different interpretations of the Bible? Well, here, when the Bible clearly says something is wrong, we often rationalize and uh, compromise by saying, well, there's many interpretations of this. How about this one? He says, I talked to the pastor and he didn't tell me it was wrong. I know I didn't tell him all the circumstances, but he knew enough to help me. Isn't that interesting that we often, if we're looking for advice and we're, and we're looking to maybe justify something that isn't quite right, we don't share all the information. We only share enough information to get the advice or to get the help that we want. Or another one, he says, what's done is done. I can't reverse it, so I had better live with it. You know, sometimes we're just apathetic and we say, you know, what's done is done. I, I can't go back and change it. Or the opposite effect, if I change now, people will know I was wrong before. Pride often keeps us from admitting that we were wrong, doesn't it? It's another self-deceptive thought. If I change now, people will know I was wrong before. He says another one is, I have seen other Christians do the same thing, so it must be okay. I've seen other Christians do the same thing, so it must be okay. Well, the deception in that is that the standard that God holds us to is not the standard of other Christians or not the practice of other people or whatever others might say, whether it's right or wrong. The standard is whether God says it's right or wrong. And so that's a, that can be a deceptive uh, category of, well, I've seen other people do this and, and it's okay. Or finally, he says, the most deceptive thing we tell ourselves is that I'm convinced that I am right in what I did. Once we're convinced that we're right in what we did, 
then we've passed that line of compromising our morals and uh, justifying what was wrong by our own thoughts. Um, and so he, he just reminds us here, he says, these are the different kinds of self-deception that we deal with. And um, I thought those would be good reminders of when we're tempted to compromise our morals or tempted to compromise uh, the clear teaching of God's word, we need to be mindful of those thoughts that, that may be examples of uh, deceiving ourselves or rationalizing away what God clearly asks us to do. I hope this helps you in your walk with the Lord. Thanks. <laughs>